Welcome into Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith, and we have an offensive coordinator yes, to talk about. And yeah. it is one Liam Cohen. He's gotten introduced to the media this week at his first press conference, met some of the players around the building. So tell me for you, initial thoughts on what this hiring means to the team and to the offense. Well, the, the Bucks did a very thorough search. I think they uh, interviewed seven candidates and Liam was near the end, but I think they had planned on interviewing them all along. It was just how they were handling it with the University of Kentucky. And um, I think they felt he was, well, Coach said he was the best fit for what they wanted to do offensively. So Coach Bowles and his staff went into this search with an idea of the offensive philosophy that they wanted to follow. And they felt that Liam was the best choice to probably provide some bit of continuity between what they were doing last year under Dave Canales, a lot of good things, but how do you continue that when you're changing coordinators and changing systems and not starting over from ground zero? And now you have a guy that has a lot of the same sort of background as Dave Canales, working with Sean McVay and the Rams. Dave Canales didn't do that, but Shane Waldron and the connection and all that. So um, I think it was the best way to have continuity, but also a guy that they felt really had the same philosophy as to how to run an offense. And part of that philosophy is something he talked about in his press conference that I think is probably going to make a lot of the players pretty happy. It's huge, man. When you have when you have playmakers, life life's a lot more fun. I mean, you can like I said, you can call any play in the world, but when you can just call a slant or a hitch or an Omaha and the ball could potentially go in the end zone or you call a go ball and and those 50-50s are now 80-20s or 70-30s. Um, that's not anything I can coach. And so when you have those type of players, man, the game is a lot more fun. And uh, that's ultimately what football is, right? It's about, like, it's about players, not plays, but uh, if we can put them in the position to be successful with, with talent, you know, usually good things happen. So I couldn't be more excited to get to work with those guys, man. They seem like really good people and, and workers, just like everybody that I've heard in this building. So uh, really excited to get to work with those guys. So players, not plays, which is interesting from a play caller to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what he's saying is the job of, a offensive, uh, of an offensive coordinator is not to wow everybody with your play design and your play calling and prove that no matter who you get the ball to, you can, make, you can run an offense. It's not about you, even though it is yours, and that was important to him that this is his, whether good or bad, the buck stops with him. The job is to get the, the ball to your best playmakers as much as possible and especially in key moments and he said at one point that when he's in a game he has a play call and he, you know the play call sheet that mm -hmm. they all hold up on the back he has boxes for those players and he can look at that and go okay we haven't done this to him we need to get the ball to him this many times we need to get to him you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's a reminder to him to get the ball in the hands of right. uh, and when you have mike evans and chris godwin and rashad, rashad white and good Kate Otten, even it's a, it's a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even he was saying it almost didn't matter what the defenses would be or the coverages would be, that it was like. Sometimes, you, yeah. Sometimes you're just going to get, you're going to try and get it to them. Who cares what they're doing? We want to get it into yeah. our play caller's hands, which right. is great. Um, and one of those players that uh, he hopes is maybe making some plays for him is Baker Mayfield because they do have some familiarity with each other. Right. Baker Mayfield uh, was claimed by the Rams in that 2022 season where Liam Cohen was the Rams offensive coordinator. He wasn't the play caller. That was the year after they won the Super Bowl. Matt Stafford got hurt. Cooper Cup got hurt. They started four different quarterbacks. It was just kind of a lost season offensively. And by the time they claimed Baker off waivers uh, in early December, they weren't having a lot of fun. And, and um, Liam said Baker immediately brought the fun back to the whole team. He brought competitiveness back on the practice field. And those two in a pretty short amount of time formed a pretty good relationship and so Liam coming here he said it was one of the attractions that he had a shot now he's the potential to work with Baker Mayfield because as we know uh, he's a pending free agent so a new contract has to be done before that happens but I think Liam came here with a optimism that it would happen and of course Baker has said on multiple occasions that he likes it here and would like to stay here so hopefully they can work that out because that was a draw for Liam Cohen. Yeah and then I know but not only is he going to be planning to put Baker in the best spot. He definitely does still want to continue the emphasis on the run game right. that the team had been working on and the growth in that area. So what did you hear about how he wants to continue the right. growth there? Well, Dave Canales uh, wanted to have a balanced offense and to his credit, he did in terms of play calling. The 
uh, he, he kept it very balanced and he stuck to his word that he would not abandon the run. Um, but in, at the end of the day, the Bucks' run offense was still at the bottom of the league in terms of yards per game. So how do you fix that? There's a number of ways, but one I found intriguing that Liam Cohen said that hopefully the Bucks could get to is giving the quarterback and the center a little bit more autonomy at the line of scrimmage before the snap. So you have a lot of plays that he said were on a can, which means you have on the front of the can, like a can of soda, on the front of the can you have the play you want to run. On the back of the can, there's a companion play hmm. that you can go to that one instead and the Rams have that on 95% of their plays. Wow. Um, Liam said he didn't know if the, how soon the Bucks could get to that but if you can have your quarterback out there recognizing defenses, understanding what the defenses are trying to do to you and being able to put your run plays against better looks, that will improve the game. So it may take a little while to get there but that could help quite a bit. And I know you mentioned that Liam Cohen, you mentioned Kentucky and the Rams and some yeah. of these stops. Tell us a little bit about his path to this point. So he had three years on Sean McVay's staff uh, I think that would be eight, 2018 to 2020 in a couple positions like assistant wide receiver, assistant quarterback. And then he got hired by Kentucky to be their offensive coordinator, which is something he always wanted to do, have his own offense call plays. But then the Rams were interested in, in hiring him back, and he went back to Los Angeles in 2022 uh, because, as he said, he wanted to help out his friend Sean McVay, and he wanted to be involved in that. Uh, but when he was there in Los Angeles, he realized – what he was missing, that he wanted to be a play caller, that he wanted to be running an offense that was his. So when he got a shot to go back to Kentucky, that's why he did that. But now this opportunity arrives and it's really his lifelong dream mm -hmm. to be calling plays in the NFL. And one of the interesting things about the Bucks' offense in recent years is how Chris Godwin has been used outside, slot. We've seen he can have success anywhere. He's an right. incredibly talented wide receiver. Um, what insight have we gotten into how this new offensive coordinator it, wants to use it? It looks like uh, Liam Cohen will want to use uh, Godwin a lot more like he was in the Tom Brady era when he was really a weapon in the slot. Um, and he just says he, he can be such a weapon in there. And as you said, Last year, um, Dave Canales decided to use him a lot of different ways and a lot more outside, and it still worked. He still had roughly the same amount of yards as the year before. Uh, but if you look at some of the numbers, you can see that he's had so much so much success working out of the slot. And look at the percentages uh, in the percentage column there. That's the number of percentage of plays that Chris ran out of the slot or tied against the line because we know what a great run blocker he is when he's there. See the big drop from 72% to 39%. And if you look at it, his catch percentage went way down and his yak went way down. Now that's a function of the different type of right. plays that you're running. But if you look at that year in 2021, when he caught 70%, I mean, he played 70% in the slaughter tight, almost 80 yards per game and 613 yak, which was among league leaders. That's the kind of thing that Chris Godwin can do. And Liam doesn't have to just guess from looking at a few pieces of tape. He can look at three years and know that this can work. That's going to be interesting. Well, not only did the Bucks hire a new offensive coordinator, but they had a couple guys having fun at the Pro Bowl uh -huh. and making some making some moves at the Pro Bowl. We had uh, we had some stars out there. We had Baker Mayfield and Tristan Wirfs, who of course are just little besties, <laughs> stepbrothers photo reenactment. I loved everything about watching the two of them have so much fun uh, at the Pro Bowl games. And then they both did really well yeah. in their respective areas that we saw. Uh, Baker just lighting it up in the, in the game. And then we also saw, and of course, here's him getting the offensive MVP of the games. And we saw Tristan using that strength that uh, we know him so well for. Uh, to help the NFC win the Move the Chains event. Yeah, the, mo cool. the Move the Chains win where they had to move all this weight off and then go to the other side and pull the sled together. Mm -hmm. uh, Tristan was the first one done. He was just waiting on the other side for his other guys, but then they managed to win. And then Baker won the Precision, precision Passing event. And then um, it, it was a little bit confusing to me when I was looking back at it because I saw the end of the flag football game and I saw the score and the NFC seemed to win. And then I look at the box score and the AFC won, but it's because it was a composite score so you get points for winning the different events right yes so I didn't quite quite realize that at first so because he won precision passing and, and got the NFC a bunch of points and then he had some big touchdown passes in the flag football game he was the overall overall MVP, MVP, MVP which is, is cool it's kind of like a nice little cap on this comeback season yes for a Baker who 
exceeded almost everybody's externally expectations during the season and then you see oh baker mayfield's in the pro bowl and then yeah baker mayfield's in the pro is, bowl is and a he's, star of the he's pro also bowl. the star yeah, yeah i so. loved that that was great for him and, and for tristan as well so you know we've hired the offensive coordinator another open spot we ended up having to fill with special teams coordinator as keith armstrong retired so um where do we kind of stand at this point with that job and, and what his retirement could mean well the bucks have uh, cast a wide net just like they did with um, the offensive coordinator position. They interviewed six people, Giants, uh, former Giants coordinator uh, Thomas McGahey, former t former Titans coordinator Craig Ackerman, I'm trying to do this from memory, Yes. Uh, a Saints assistant um, Phil Galliano, former Seahawks coordinator Larry Izzo, uh, Iowa, Iowa, the University of Iowa special teams coordinator uh, LeVar Woods, and of course the internal candidate Keith Tandy who's done good things for the Buccaneers the last four years. Now, um, there are reports that the Buccaneers are close to a decision on that, but we don't have any if anything official on that, so we kind of have to stop there. But these are the candidates we've talked about so far. All right, well that's gonna be really interesting to see how that shakes out. Special teams was an interesting group to watch. I mean, Chase McLaughlin had a great year, yeah. and Jake Kamarda can punch the moon. Leg, and yeah. <laughs> so one he's thing coming into some talented guys. Yeah, one thing though that Coach Bull said in his day after the season ended press conference is that we want more out of our return game. Mm -hmm. And you, um, Devin Tompkins was like, 15th in the NFC or in the NFL in punt return average, so that was fine. But the one thing the Buccaneers haven't had in a very long time is that explosive play on either punts or kickoff returns. You see here the last kickoff return touchdown or punt return touchdown for the Bucks was 2010. That's the biggest drought in the NFC or NFL right now, as you can see. Wow. Most teams have had one in the last few years. So that's interesting. It, some of that I think is luck. I mean, yes, they, you just didn't quite break one, but. That's something that the Bucks would obviously like to add occasionally, mm -hmm. the really big explosive play yeah. on punt or kickoff return. So I know we are also going to, each week here on this show, look ahead to the draft and especially the first round pick and what we think is a potential position that they could address at that spot. So I know that we talked about a different one this last show that today we're gonna to talk about the safety position. So how much do you see this being something that they might address that high in the draft? Yeah, I, I don't know first round because um, if you look at the prospects available, the safety position isn't really very top heavy and there's some other needs that Bucks might address, but maybe early on day two uh, because you really don't have a lot settled there. Um, obviously you have an all pro, first team all pro. It's a good place to start with Antoine Winfield, but at the other spot, it was really by committee. Uh, we used four different guys at uh, safety, a Antoine pretty much played every snap, of course, because you'd never take him off the field. But if you look here, you had Ryan Neal, who is the main starter, but not the entire season. He was good in run support for the most part. Dee Delaney is a ball hawk. That's why they brought in him in in some plays. Kayvon Merriweather was the undrafted rookie. He was a good tackler out there. And then they even tried Zion McCollum because that allowed them to put their three best cover guys on the field at the same time. But I don't think there's necessarily one answer there. And then if you also look at the fact that the Bucks have to get Winfield under contract. Now, I think that they probably will, but that has to be done. Ryan Neal's contract is up. Dee Delaney's contract is up. And Zion McCollum is likely to spend most of next year at cornerback. So you could really use another, you know, impact player and guy that can play every down in safety, I think. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us on this edition of Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Stay tuned for all of the coverage of our new offensive coordinator and some of the other positions the Bucks are still looking to fill on Buccaneers.com. Mm -hmm.